Did you know that Fusion comes with a 3D system that you can use to create all kinds of good stuff? Um, like this scene right here, for example. Uh, so everything you see here is entirely rendered within Fusion. And I think, in my humble opinion, it just goes to show the incredible capability of this program. So what we're going to do in today's video is that we are going to be creating essentially this water with uh, all of the displacements and the reflections. So I've already prepared a bit of a scene here. You can see this node tree. And if I play the last node, you can see this is essentially the scene as it is right now. So I've removed the plane. So in the Merge 3D, we have the headset model. We have the um, huge sphere with a uh, HDRI on it. So as you can see here, we have this um, HDRI here that is essentially going through a couple of color corrections. Uh, it's going into a sphere map node, and that sphere map node is being piped onto a huge sphere that I've essentially increased the size of quite a bit. I've also animated all of this inside Fusion, so this is uh, how the animation looks like. So some simple basic stuff, and then I've added some ambient occlusion, multiplying that on top of it. And then we have the color grading afterwards, um, which is all of these nodes, uh, which essentially has a result that looks like this. Let's go ahead and bring it all together by adding some water. So uh, first things first, let's add a merge 3D. So I'm adding that after this one. Then let's create a shape 3D, pipe that into the merge. There you go. Uh, let's quickly just rotate the merge on the rotate the merge minus 90 degrees on the x axis and we can increase the scale to 50. Okay so that's the plane done now let's add some shaders to that so uh, add in a cook torrents and a reflect node pipe that into the shape 3d you can see nothing happened and that is because fusion is image based so we need an image to um, pipe into these things so uh, to create the essentially the reflection image uh, we're going to be adding in a down here we're going to be adding in a spherical camera like so and this is the spherical camera uh, and then in the merge 3d with all the lighting enabled we need to add a render 3d after that and then if we view the render 3d we can come into the camera here and we can specify to use the spherical camera and it looks a bit trippy uh, and then we need to add in a sphere map like so now you can see we have the sphere map here with essentially the hdr and the headset with lighting and then all we need to do is pipe that in to the uh, reflect node. If you hold down alt while you release the pipe, you'll get up the menu, choose reflection color. And then if we go back out here, you can see, whoa, something happened. Uh, let me just show you before and after. There we go. Now we have the reflections. However, you might notice that we have some sun over here and we have some sun over here. So I don't know if it's a bug or what it is, but the spare map sometimes need to be rotated on the y-axis minus 90 degrees for it to match better. Now you can see it is matching. Okay, and you might be wondering, that's nice, but where is the headset? Well, let me show you. The headset is, it's, uh, it's down below. You can see the edge of it there. So it's, it's massive. <laughs> um, oh, and to actually increase the visibility, you can also come into the cook torrents that you've connected into the yellow input and then just lower the opacity. There we go. Now the reflection is much clearer. However, you might notice that the headset is insanely large and in the wrong perspective. So if we view the renderer again, you can see we, we don't see any headset at all, actually. We need to put the spherical camera to where we want the reflections to be rendered from, if that makes any sense at all. So um, let's go into the regular camera 3D. Make sure you have the transform tab open and then hit this pin icon. So when you've pinned the camera, uh, go into the spherical camera. Let's go into the transform of that one. And then what we need to do is we need to essentially parent the, um, the spherical camera to the camera 3D by 
right clicking on the XYZ and then add an expression for every value. So you only need to do this three times. Uh, then we need to drag X into X, Y into Y, and Z. Notice the screen here when I'm doing it, and you notice the reflection down here. There you go. However, it is not quite correct. We want the spherical camera to mirror the uh, Y axis of the regular camera. So quickly, just in the Y expression here, just add in a minus before all of the text and let it render. And there you go. We have something that is looking like a reflection. Since we added the minus, if I just go into the camera 3D and then just move the camera upwards, you can see that the spherical camera is moving downwards. So, you know, it's mirrored. It's doing exactly what we want it to do. Now what we can do is create some distortion and ripples on the uh, image plane to get an ocean effect. So how we are going to do that is essentially by, just move that merge over there and we can, and then alt and drag to create a router. Uh, we can create a displace 3D node and we can create a fast noise. Let me just uh, pull screen this. If we add the fast noise into the displace, oh, and we need to go into the shape 3D, and then we can increase the subdivisions to 128 maybe. Look at the wireframe. You can see maybe we actually should go with 256. And I'll just, let's uh, view the fast noise. Now, since this is a displacement texture, uh, so let's type in 2048 by 2048. That's essentially the standard 2K texture, which is plenty enough for this tutorial. Unlock the X, Y axis. We can scale up the X scale quite a bit. Uh, we can scale up the Y scale a bit as well. Actually, let's make this, um, let's make this uh, 40. Uh, and then we can lower the contrast quite a bit. Uh, let's all just watch that through the uh, render node. Now, when you are adding a displacement, oftentimes you'll find that the displace node itself is causing the plane to move. Actually, let's uh, drop the wireframe. To get it back, just drag the bias all the way down, like so. And I can see we already have some uh, wavy looking uh, things here, which is looking quite nice. However, this method is quite taxing on the system as it relies on the amount of subdivisions you have on the plane. However, we can uh, improve this by adding a uh, few more fast noise textures. Just pipe that into a merge like that. Let's just view that merge up here. In the new fast noise, 2048 by 2048. And when working with fast noises, I like to normalize the color range so that I can see what I'm doing a bit better. So this is that normalized but in reality it looks like this but you can't really see what you're doing here so yeah that's what what that's about so yeah for this one let's uh, uncheck this one again and then just increase the scale so that this would be the big waves yeah something like that that looks like it could be big waves right maybe a bit less like 3.5 and then we can add a third fast noise to add some finer details. So let's just copy this fast noise over. And then for the third one, let's just reset the scale and increase it to like 300. So if you view this, you can see we have this super rough texture here. And if we're viewing this 3D scene here, you can see that we are getting some very intense ripples. We're gonna lower the contrast, something like that. Yeah, you can, you can tweak this all day long. Um, however, having this texture here, so this is, the, this is the combined texture. So to create some movement in the ocean, let's go to frame zero. We can just uh, close the renderer for now. So yeah, let's go into the noise nodes and um, each of these fast noises and enable the keyframes on the center and then go to uh, frame 250 or the last frame for this one. We're going to enter 0.6 so that way you can see that it has some travel and for the the big waves we're going to enter we're going to enter 625 and for the medium waves 
we are going to enter 0.75. So that way we have different speeds for each of the waves and um, the movement of them will not be so uniform. You can see there is a small parallax here, which is uh, which is nice. So that's the that's the waves. Having this in the displays can be quite intensive because you're working with uh, the subdivisions here. So the effect lives and dies by the density of your plane. However, there is a way to quickly cheat and add even more detail, and that is by using a create bump map node and a bump map. Uh, pipe that into the uh, nodes and connect them up like so. So if you view that in the left viewer, we can uncheck the normalized color range. So I'm viewing the create bump map now. You can increase the height scale. You'll see the uh, bumps become very visible. And now if you go into the bump map, you can choose bump map here and you'll see you have an, quite an intense bump map um, material. If you pipe that not into the cook torrents node, but the reflect node, you'll see some wild stuff happening. Uh, and that is because we've gone completely overboard with the height scale. Let's say we want to add maybe like five. You see, this is already, I mean, it, it might be a bit too much actually still. Um, but if you enable HQ mode, you'll see a better result, of course. Yeah, there you go. I mean, this is quite a lot of detail for the reflections. Uh, and this is all procedural, so you can just scale them however you want. But uh, I think I'm, I'm going to go with two actually for that one. Keep it a bit smooth. Now there is one glaring issue, and that is that the ocean has um, quite a limited scope when it comes to the distance. So dude, let's just quickly uh, make some tweaks here so that the ocean is um, better utilized in the scene. So first of all, let's just push the ocean outwards a bit. Let's just make sure that the camera isn't going outside the border of the water, like so. And then another easy trick you can do is just add a transform 3D node, like so, pipe that into the same merge. Now you essentially have a duplicate with this transform, so you can scale this up even more. So you can scale this up 10 times the size of the original. You can see this is now so big that it's going outside our HDRI sphere. So we don't need to have it that big, but we could have it so that it leaves the sphere. No, I mean, let's just go with two there. Yeah, you can see that the planes are clipping a bit. So for the big one, let's just lower it so that it's uh, so that it won't clip as much. That is good. Okay, now all that remains is the uh, ripples. And uh, that's super easy to do. Just add another displace 3D. Add that after our first displace and then just add an ellipse mask pipe that into the displays all right so in the ellipse go into the image custom let's go with 2048 by 2048 and the depth float 32 and then in the controls uncheck solid and then increase the border width a bit yeah we're gonna go with um 0 0.01 and then to smooth this out so that it becomes a bit nicer, just increase the soft edge a bit like that. And yeah, that's looking uh, that's looking pretty decent. Let's also just increase the subdivisions here to 256. There we go. That's already a huge difference. Let's just um, lower the level here in the mask itself. Like so, we can just lower that all the way actually. Let's just view the um, the render 3D for. Um, bit more performance. To animate the ripple, let's just uh, add the level back up a bit. Let's go to frame 82, right click, height, expression, and then just drag that to the width. That way, uh, if you drag one, you can see it drags both, which is nice. And then add a keyframe, and then move it. Let's just view the merge 3D here so that we can see a bit better. So yeah, just move it down to the point so that it has the, in the middle of the headset and then just lower the size all the way increase the level to just the height and then just like you know go forward a few frames and just increase the width something like that and then we can also actually um, let me just add a few keyframes on the level and then we can lower the level on the final keyframe so that it the ripple slowly fades out 
Oh, and we also need to actually set a zero point. So that would be before. Let's just add. There we go. So something like that. So that's the ripple. However, you can see I've actually forgotten to uh, add a setting here. Uh, it looks like the water is a bit transparent, maybe. Like it looks like the geometry has some edges here that is kind of weird. And um, I realized that I've actually forgotten to connect the sphere map to the refraction tint material as well. There we go. And now we can actually go and um, make some few changes to the normal here. So let's just go into the create bump map node again, change the height scale to one. And in the bump map, go back to height map, change the height scale to 25 here. Uh, then we can go back into the mask. I can see that the level is a bit high. Let's go with something below 0.3. Yeah, that's a pretty decent size for the ripple. So whatever type of displacements you want to add to this water now, just add it. You can add as many ripples you want. You can copy the ellipses. Uh, you can add as many ellipses as you want. You can, let me just move the keyframes here. You can like, uh, can just offset the keyframes on the ellipses and you can do this however many times you want. You can also add in whatever type of uh, displacement uh, you want, you know. You can, uh, there is no limit to what you can do. Well, there is some limit, but uh, yeah, that's not important. So yeah, now the only thing this is missing is essentially some uh, motion blur. So let's just create a vector um, motion blur. I'm just adding the motion blur between where I've added the ambient occlusion and where I'm starting the color correction. So yeah, the vector motion blur goes in there and then we can just in the render 3D enable the vector in the output channels here. And then we can just pipe that into the green input of the vector motion blur. Now all that remains is to render this out and you have created some water in fusion and uh, I mean I've seen bigger no trees you know this is not too bad. Okay that's it for this one see you next time. <laughs>